Welcome. Today I'd like to talk about a famous wire cutting problem, and I'd like to solve it in an unusual way. First of all, here's the problem. Imagine you have a length of wire, let's say it's one meter long, and the idea is you're going to cut the wire at some position. And with the left piece of the wire, you're going to bend it to make a circle. And the right hand piece of wire, you're going to bend it and make a square. And the question is, where should I make this cut? So if I took the area of the left piece, the area of that circle, and added the area of the right piece, the area of that square, I get the biggest possible sum of areas, or maybe I want to get the minimum possible sum of areas, the smallest sum of areas. So where should I cut this wire to get a, a maximal sum of areas, and where should I cut it to get a minimal sum of areas? We're going to make a circle with the left piece and a square with the right piece. Um, just to be very clear, uh, let's assume this, this wire really is one unit long, so, that, you know, so that's the zero mark and that's the one mark. The question is, where should I cut? Which position x long between zero and one should I cut to give me these two areas either being maximal or minimal? So the left-hand piece will have air length x, the right-hand piece will have length one minus x. Now to solve this puzzle, this is where I get unusual, I'd like to actually uh, use the classic formula for the area of a circle and then use the fact that those same formulas actually work out for the area of a square. You need to watch my video on what is pi for a square for, to see what I mean by that. But let me just summarize the upshot of all that. So we all know that for circles, here's a circle, duh, 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 duh. its area is given by pi r squared and its circumference is given by 2 pi r, where r of course is the radius of the circle, r, and pi is the value 3.141. Now what's astounding and what's wonderful, which I love about about math, you can always push ideas, that actually the area of a square is also pi r squared, and its circumference, most people usually call it perimeter now, is 2 pi r. But you've got to be careful what you mean by r. By r, it turns out the right thing to do is to use the apothem, the short radius, and what value of pi are we talking about? It turns out pi is 4 for a square. Like I said, you need to see that video, what is pi for a square. Um, so I'm going to use both a circle and a square, so it looks like I've got two different R's I'm talking about and two different pi values. So just to be very clear, I'll call this R1 for circle, I'll call that R2 for square. This is pi1, so pi1 is about 3.141, and that's pi1, that's R1 and R1. And this is pi2, R2, pi2, R2, where pi2 is 4 on the nose. All right, so what I'd like to do is Cap, cap, figure out where I need to cut my wire, so if I take this formula and add to it this formula, I get the smallest possible area, or I get the largest possible total area. I want to just do, look at the extreme areas. Alright, now, if you recall, this wire was cut at some positions with a length of x and a length of 1 minus x. So this left piece is going to make a circle. So that tells me that 2 pi 1 r1 is x, and this right piece is made to square, 2 pi 2 r2 is 1 minus x. All right, that's great. Remember, pi 2 is the pi value for a square, r2 is this length, this radius for the square, this apothem. Uh, I can actually solve for r1 and r2. r1 is actually x on 2 pi 1, and r2 is 1 minus x on 2 pi 2. Now I know what the radiuses are, I can now use my formulas for the areas. To work at the area of the circle, it's going to be pi 1, its radius squared. And the area of the square is going to be pi 2, its radius squared. Um, I can simplify this a little bit. Area 1 is pi 1 times x squared over 4 times pi 1 squared, so it gives me 1 over 4 pi 1 x squared. And the area of the square is going to be the same basic same formula, 1 over 4 pi 2, 1 minus x squared. And there are the two areas I want to add. So I want to figure out what value of x twixt 0 and 1 gives the biggest and smallest value for the sum of these two formulas. All right. Well, actually, if you look at this for the summation formula, it's just a quadratic. It's just got x squared, so by expand, it's got an x term and a constant term. So all I have to do is basically, it's just a quadratic problem. So let me, let me write it out in glorious detail, and then we'll find where it has a max, and we'll find where it has a min. And all should be jolly good, and we're basically done. So get rid of this messy, messy green, and we'll try this. And let's be serious. Let's do this in a black pen now. All right, so the total area right now is 1 over 4 pi 1 x squared plus 1 over 4 pi 2 1 minus x squared. Let's actually expand it out. Um, if I expand the 1 minus x squared, I'll get an x squared, a minus 2x, and a 1. So the x squared terms combined give me 1 over 4 pi 1 plus 1 over 4 pi 2 worth of x squareds. 
I get a minus 2x, and that deals with the 4 pi, so I get minus 1 on 2 pi 2x, I believe. And then I get a constant term of 1, which gets multiplied by 1 over 4 pi 2. So there it is. I basically have a little quadratic. It's upward facing. Um, it, at x equals 0, it's 1 over 4 pi 2. So it must be something like this. So right now I can see, see that actually the really interesting value is going to be the minimum. It's going to be a minimal area at some value where that vertex is. Uh, I know the wire at some position 1, I just don't know what it is. Somewhere along this diagram, it's probably going to be the maximum. Or it depends where the 1 is, maybe it's close down here. We need to figure that out. However, um, most people might say, okay, we know where the vertex is because they like to memorize formulas like x equals negative b over 2a or something, which I don't memorize. I have no idea that, what that formula is. Um, when I deal with math problems, I just look at and just try to use my common sense. Uh, one thing I notice about this is that there's, the, there's some interesting x values, but just focus on the x part of this this diagram, this is my standard way of doing things, I'm going to find the symmetrical point to this 1 over 4 pi over 2, because then I know the vertex will be halfway between those symmetrical points. Uh, so to focus on the interesting x values, let me pull out a common factor of x. It looks a bit messy, but uh, the concept is pretty straightforward if you've watched my quadratic videos. Do, 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 x minus 1 on 2 pi 2. That's it expanded, and I've got this constant term. Great. That now tells me there are two obvious interesting x values. Uh, back to change of pen. When whoops, when this guy is 0, I get this point, 1 over 4 pi over 2. And when this guy is 0, uh, I get x times 0, I get this symmetrical point, 1 over 4 pi over 2 again. And that occurs when this, this term is 0, and that happens at, oh, I can do it in my head, it's uh, at 1 over 2 pi 2 over 1 over 4 pi 1 plus 1 over 4 pi 2. Great, I now know that point which means the minimum occurs halfway between 0 and this funky point. So the minimum occurs when x is half of this guy. Whew. Well, that's become a very messy board, not very good board technique here. Well, half of this is pretty easy. The minimum occurs when x is 1 over half of this, 1 over 4 pi 2, 1 over 4 pi 1, plus 1 over 4 pi 2. Fractions within fractions, annoying. Let me multiply the numerator and denominator each by uh, 4 pi 2. So 1 over uh, pi 2 over pi 1 plus 1. Oh, that's again annoying. Um, oops, uh, let, me, let me get rid of this part. Do, do, do. Uh, I've still got fractions within fractions, so let me multiply the top and bottom each by pi 1 now. And I'm going to get my final answer. The minimum occurs when x equals uh, multiplying top and bottom by pi 1, pi 1 over pi 1 plus pi 2. Uh, since I was in the wire cutting, the other piece, just to get it, is 1 minus this, uh, 1 minus pi 1 over pi 1 plus pi 2. We got this one as a um, common denominator, and you see this is pi 2 over pi 1 plus pi 2. Very interesting. This now tells me the minimum occurs when the left piece has this length and the right piece has this length. But what's really nice about that, ha ha ha, there's actually really, these, these formulas are actually stunningly beautiful. Um, look at the ratio of these two lengths. The length of the left piece to the length of the right piece, 1 minus x, is this dot formula divided by that formula. Well, they have a common denominator. That is, the ratio of those two lengths is precisely the ratio of the pi values. We have just learnt to get the minimum area in the wire cutting problem. You should cut that wire in such a way that the ratio of the left piece to the right piece is exactly the same ratio as the pi values. Um, this is about 3.1, this is about 4. That tells me the minimum sum of areas occurs when you cut about 3 quarters of the way along. Uh, just to get the maximum value, I guess we just found the minimum. Now the maximum could either be at 0, or it could be wherever this 1 is. If the 1 is just the left here, it might be might be too low if one's over here to the too high. Uh, putting x equals 0 into our original formula obviously gives me, x equals 0 gives me this point, got it. Put x equals 1 into the original formula, this vanishes and it tells me I get 1 over 4 pi 1. And I'm actually going to do it over here because pi 1 was the value of pi for circle, it's about 3, so it's about 1 twelfth compared to 1 over 4 times 4, pi for a value of square is 4, 1 sixteenth. So that tells me uh, to get the maximum values cut at x equals 1. That is, cut the wire so the left piece is length 1 and the right hand piece is length 0. That is, use all the wire to make a circle and use none of the wire to make a square. That gives me the maximal total area. Well, brilliant.
brilliant. That's that's the wire cutting problem. It turns out to be, if you're willing to play with weird pi values, just a little quadratic formula in this disguise. And what's beautiful about this result is that actually it says that there's meaning to talk about James Tan's weird way of de dealing with pi because it appears naturally. So just to summarize, and I'll give you a challenge in my summary, we have learned if you take a piece of wire, cut it somewhere, and take the left piece to make a circle and the right piece to make a square, you need to cut the wire in such a way that the left piece to the right piece is in the ratio of the pi values. And of course, it doesn't matter um, which shape you use. Maybe I could want to divide this and make it into a, a triangle. It too has a nice well-defined pi value. And again, to minimize the total area, divide by cut the wire in the ratio of the two shapes. In fact, if I may decide to please make a uh, regular pentagon with the left-hand piece, it has a nice pi value, and make it equal to a triangle with the right-hand piece, again, cut the wire in the ratio of the pi values. So that's the nice thing. So the length of the left to the length of the right is going to be just the ratio of the pi values. Exercise. Prove that for these minimal solutions, be they circles and squares or pentagons and triangles, that the ratio of the pi values also equals the area of the left shape uh, divided by the area of the right shape. So actually, if you get the minimal solution, you cut the y at the ratio of the pi values, and you get two shapes whose areas are the ratio of the pi values. See if you can prove that. That's not too bad. Now comes a hard challenge. Are you ready for a juicy hard challenge? Why stick with two shapes? Suppose I said to you, let's cut the wire at two different positions. With the left piece, make a circle. With the middle piece, make a square. With the right-hand piece, make an equilateral triangle. Where should you cut these wires to minimize the total sum of areas? And wouldn't it be astounding if the ratio of the three pieces you cut to get this minimal solution turns out to be precisely in ratio with the three pi values? I wonder if that is true, and that would be remarkably beautiful if that's the case. Go find out. Thanks very much.